have unlimited engage. Like, how do you mess up these team fights? Kaiser should never <laughs> get caught. From between the Hecarim, the Ornhorn, the Emperor's Divide, Alistair's Pulverize, it's like, Heisa should be super safe to do damage and clean up. As long as you have a strong engage, if you actually have positional advantage, like, how do you lose team fights if you're KT rolls? So they have such a strong comp for the late game in terms of team fighting. They do. There is a lot of scaling on the side of Nongshim Red Force. I don't know if we get there, though. I feel like this game might just be blown wide open in the mid game. And, uh, you know, playing front to back, perhaps you can make something happen. There's not a fantastic amount of disengage from the side of Nongshin, though, so you might just get absolutely bowled over. It's kind of my expectation here for this game. We'll see if it does play out that way, and if KT can prove that they are the stronger team, at least here in game number two. The other trade in the bottom side where your hybrid got ignited. Uh, as you were mentioning, that that's... Oh, they're going to go for it. Hybrid's sticking around here. We'll see if a death sentence comes out. And we also got a trade in the mid lane. Bay is really forcing this one, running right next to that Azir. He tries to TP away. Are you kidding? You're not going to get away with that, sir. The you difference is going to be that the bot lane isn't going to explode as easily. Oh, boy. Level 6 to level 5, Rich has to just flash in the lane. And it always seems to go this way. Whenever we see... Oh, he's going for it. The knockup comes in here. Does he have enough he damage? Six. So he doesn't have any mana. And now level six is hit here for Rich. I think Doran, he's got some mana back now. And one more hit will do it. It looks like, ooh, okay, there he goes. Just barely going to reach out that uh, stubby little Orn arm look at Rich and face, poke dude. him down. <laughs> yeah. Flash down as well here for Rich. Right, so this is pretty aggressive. Yeah. Getting in there. Uh, we have Yukal rotating down here. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you see him throw up the thumbs up. He's like, yeah, you got me. Meanwhile. Oh, we got to fight down on the bottom side. Here's the horsey trying to turn things around. Duck down with... The he does have the Feather Storm, but he actually just doesn't even... Changes in the bottom side of the map. There's so much going on that we're living in the past. Uh, we're living <laughs> through this game through replays as... You see the knockup go down on the peanut who wanted to take the lantern. He's just collapsed upon there. Cannot actually take it. So it's just a really nice collapse there. A little bit of a mistake, obviously, as well from Peanut. And uh Ko is we're gonna see the headbutt onto Kellen. Ends up being a trade back here. But it's gonna be a two for one. Nice cleanup. Blank is always where he needs to be. Blank's Hecarim actually has been so map just yet. They're gonna push this lane in and maybe look for it here, but okay, yeah. Gonna get more than it, maybe. See. Yeah, they're just getting so much poke down. I mean, Gale Force is already done. They're diving underneath as Duck Dom and Kellen just put on a clinic. Dude, and it's not about like how much damage Hybrid does alone. It's about how much CC they have. Speaking of which, oh no. <laughs> well, that wasn't it, Bay. You don't want to get. You don't want to flash into the Emperor's Divide. You should have had their carry alongside of Bay to try to help out because uh, they certainly seem to need it here. Peanut getting more and more confidence here. You can see that Kellen now rotating over. They're running him down with the red buff. He's got Ornhorn. Right in a lot of trouble. Flash comes in, miss on the hook. Doran, nice dodge, but the follow-up is palpable here from the side of Nongshim Red Force, able to run down the Orn. Very situation here. He's actually running the other way back to his turret now, but I feel like maybe he should have just tried to uh, Good ult. run down bottom side. There's the ult. Nice flash, <laughs> but... At the end of the day, it's three on one. It doesn't matter if you have a turret. KT will respond by taking the mid tier one at least. So we'll trade back in a bound, right? You're looking to use the range that you have on your side with, uh, okay, well. Looks like we do have the fight coming in here from Blank, but he's so fast that he's gonna run out of yeah. there before the teleport even <laughs> gets off. Surely looks to be mostly wasted. Although maybe he might get a, nope. Looks like that will be denied. Just Another one of those. Oh, we're going to watch two things at once. Uh, uh, what are we going to watch? Oh, no. This is like, okay. Well, we do get that hook coming in from Kellen, but this teleport might be a little bit of trouble. Peanut is going to have to run away. Kellen now in an awkward spot, and Rich kind of getting baited into this one. They want to try to kite it out. You see Duck Dom has to try to front line. Here comes Bay. Looking to lock down Zeus if possible. The Lambs are spite up on the top side. Important as they will take Peanut out eventually. And that's a good trade for KT. They take yeah. away 
the enemy jungler and you only lose your cow. I mean, that's fine. And that's 40 seconds before this Drake fight. I mean, they looked for one pick that great. You don't have hard engage. You don't have disengage. And this Baron clear time is pretty fast for KT and they have so much CC. Like, how do you collapse in on this? If you're Nongshim, you're gonna have such a hard time. I think they're just gonna rely on Peanut to try to get a steal here, but the knockup comes in and there it is. Collected from the side of KT, lands or spite only to save Peanut, and Zeus will go down, so they do take down one member of KT. But that's four of them now with the buff on the run here. You can see that Kellen thinking about it, but again... I mean, I'd, I'd rather see Bay down here making sure they can control Vision than having no. him side lane. They want to get onto Rich, and Rich, <laughs> he was backing. He's like, oh, maybe I can get away from this. You're not getting away from anything. You're just dead. <sighs> it's their only way to engage. And KT are giving them so much room, actually. It's a bit surprising for me as the TP now going to come in and actually they do get the Cloud Soul that is massive on the side of Nongshim and KT just not confident enough to take that fight and now we're just barreling down mid for Nongshim in this game. It should not be understated. And Nongshim say, well, if you're going to line up for us, maybe we can take an engage. There we go. Blank in an unfortunate position just gets taken out immediately. The Gale Force, I think, was the killing blow there and Duck Thumb is just frontlining. As Doran, not sure about that charge, but a lot of damage coming out from the Azir. The follow-up from Doran, not good enough. As the Featherstorm finally does come out, but here comes Hybrid. Finally has his moment to shine. And is there enough damage to take him out? I don't think so. Yukal this so has low. been the problem. Yukal unbelievably low, but it just does not matter. He's got double stopwatch, as he always does, and Hybrid is just too much of a threat. This is going to be a pentakill, no doubt for the Kai'Sa, unless, Rich? unless Rich gets the kill. Never mind. Zeus he get was trying so hard and Juice was like, yeah, you got this covered, right? You do 7,453 damage. Clean it up here. And now we got a very fun map state as bearing down on Rich, they're gonna try to one combo the Aatrox, but not quite able to. Flash over the wall to get away from that one, but Zeus extremely low. And look at you, Cal, isolated on the top side. Rich is just taking so much pressure away from his team. And look at Peanut just running forward and inting. He could just immediately he goes down. He's feared. He can't ult, but I mean, the, the pressure is on here. I mean, this is going to be an inhibitor for sure. Yeah. He, he maybe more. It's a lot of space, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was a great fight for Nongshim on the other side of things. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, Bay had a great stopwatch versus you, Cal. Fantastic positioning as well. They disengage. Um, and he's too fed. Duckdom's too fed. They they can't do anything. Hybrid is desperately trying to get in there, but he can't. There's no Hecarim ultimate. And man, we need the clown noses, the clown car. We need everything right now. I, I just, I don't have enough words for this game. Featherstorm is gonna come down. They're gonna focus down the Nexus. The autos though are enough. I mean, they are just barely gonna take down the Nexus. Finally. <laughs> he has this big moment in that game. And Hybrid actually did more damage. He did the most damage in the game, but it just did not matter. It wasn't enough. Yeah, it wasn't enough. The team fights were not, they were not clean enough for KT Rolster. The coordination was not there. Um, yeah. And you think it's, it's a composition that has so much CC and so much hard engage that it's almost too big to fail, right, in the late game. But it, it just was so well out, uh, outplayed by Notion. Their handling of a lot of those team fights was really good. The gold difference graph, I think, really tells the story of both team fans' <laughs> heart monitors. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of spike oh. it up and down. But at the end of the day, Nongshim take a big upset win here. And uh, it's hard to pick a POG for them because, you know, it was so crazy. Both. both Another quick two of victories between two teams. And Nongshim was able to lap down that win in order to get their third win of the split. KT was having a really good time on the Hecarim pick, so they went back to this Hecarim and also Azir, just like game number one. I think Peanut was also able to get Kindred out of his comfort pick. I think both teams actually managed to get some of the um, okay comps. It was really just like nothing really stood out based on their comps. I think the key player on the side of Nongshim Red Force is Thrash Kellen. Aphelios Thrash is also really good, but I think Thrash was actually the centerpiece of their bottom comp. And this time around, well, it was really impressive to see Kellen kind of playing around his movement speed.
덕담과 켈린 듀오가 I think 덕담 켈린 듀오가 are the ones that leading their team to the victory. When they lack some initiation tools, actually they can fall behind, but they had a very solid lead throughout the game, so they were able to keep snowballing down the game. Yongshin Red Force, they definitely played really well around the bottom duo, so let's take a look at the highlights. How Yongshin Red Force was able to lock down some kills. Yongshin didn't have their top priority, so as soon as they saw Hikarim was on the Herald, he that instantly rotated down to bottom, but then Kellett was able to actually make a solo kill, you know, duo kill down on the bottom lane. Alistar is a very tanky champion, but with that perfect engagement coming out from Kellen and Dongtam, they were able to get a very early kill onto the enemy support and Peanut was able to pick up that dragon stack. It was a very clean engagement and a combo coming out from two bottom duos, so nothing much was invested, but still they were able to pick up that valuable kill. However, the game was really close, so we were not really able to predict the result, but this was the signal for Dongshim's victory. So this is the weakness of a jungler without flash. Whenever a jungler takes ghost as one summoners, well actually it requires a lot more flashes footsteps. But somehow also KT managed to kind of even out this fight. And Kaisa was able to pick up so many kills. First kill, second kill and triple kill. And he also connected that into a quadra kill. It was a very long fight and Aatrox was able to actually salvage the team. Alistar, he was so low on mana, so there was no skill that he could actually cast. That was also really critical for KT and Dongshim. They seemed like they were falling apart, but still, with that perfect outplay from Rich, they were able to actually keep the lead in their hands. Kaisa, because she died in the end, she actually revi revived the last. So even though Dongshim was not having the ideal team fight, they still was able to keep pushing forward. Kespakup, just like the Kespakup semi-finals, Dongshim Red Force was able to take down T1 once again and Tokdam locked down that POG. <laughs> Zaya. I think Zaya is becoming the mainstream ch a marksman champion here in the LCK and Doktam definitely showed a huge success on this champion. I think it's actually one of the most impressive Zaya play that we saw recently. Well, Zaya is a very typical late game focused champion, but it was really critical that Zaya was able to pick up a very early kill during the laning phase so she was able to get fed super fast and I think Gale Force Zaya is really stylish she can do damage in the front lane and then she can use her ultimate in order to look for her survive I think Dokdam does a lot of things, um, get, Dokdam gets a lot of things done on this side of Nongshim Red Force. I think a lot of teams actually have to keep their eyes on this player. Eight, nine of nine goes over to Dokdam, and Kellen was able to also pick up another POG vote. So